Hello Matt, it is the 30th of March. Right, so I got a big update on the university part. I pretty much decided that um, Bristol and Salisbury are terrible because <laughs> Bristol were my least favourite and my three choices and they asked me to go for an interview and I'd already got an offer from Winchester so I was basically like nope and um, uh, Bournemouth slash Salisbury um, haven't got back to me yet they, they did come back to me once but I think that's only a system like response so yeah I decided to pretty much um, say hey I got a letter from Winchester the other day that said Martha's been upgraded to an unconditional offer um, which, you know, really good. So I'm pretty much saying, hey, no point in having an insurance choice. I um, might as well just go for Winchester. So there, there we go. Um, in By um, September, I'm going to be vlogging from Winchester. And, yeah, I'm going to be studying there for uni. Not too far away, just a little bit down south. And, yeah, um, should be pretty nice. Film production. S same exact qualification as from... Uh, well, same qualification name as Bournemouth University of the Arts, so yeah, it's actually very similar to Norwich. Um, so I've not got anything lost, actually. I actually really like Winchester, really close, really good uni, yeah, I'm going to like it there. Right, so before I go to uni, though, I've got the summer, which is going to be action-packed. Well, you, you say yours is, I can probably agree. Uh, you're starting the preparations that early. <laughs> uh, now, my summer, I'm going to New York in July, mid-July. Um, probably good chance I'm going to Spain again in late August. But for the actual summer, I'm probably just going to be working a lot overtime because I need that money for uni. Um, I really will need it because, you know, I'm probably not going to be working at Waitrose when I'm going, when I'm at uni, so I am... Yeah, I'm not going to be there. i uh, going to need to get all the overtime and money I can get before I go to uni, just in case I don't get a part-time job immediately. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do quite a lot of overtime, do a lot of work on my... Um, uh, probably uh, editing skills, just so you know, I'm up to date with it. And, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to really update my YouTube channel because the fashion I is such a barren wasteland at the moment. Um, however, I may, that's a big may, be featured on one of the next bombastic gamer videos, Battlefront videos, because I submitted a clip to them. Uh, <laughs> a completely pointless off-topic thing. Um, but yeah, my YouTube channel's probably not going to be updated during the summer, so yeah, I'm just going on two holidays. Not a lot else, really. Mm, going to be pretty dead summer holidays, but you know what? It's worth it, because this is like the last summer holidays that I'm going to be, you know, wholly in Reading, um, or, you know, a Reading-based education. And in general news around the world, um, Article 50 was handed, I don't know what the hell that is, um, <laughs> Article 50, whatever the hell that is, was just declared today or something, meaning that we start leaving you. I have no idea what it really means, but... Oh well, I'll take it. After nine months, they finally get something going. Uh, I'm not even procrastinating this much with my FMP. Like, they have procrastinated for nine months. Bloody lazy gits, the government. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was finally handed in. And I'm not using the word Brexit because it just annoys me. It, it, annoys, it sounds like a breakfast. Uh, it really sounds like a cereal. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I know it's a bit of a taboo subject at the moment but I'm wondering Matt what is your general thoughts on Britain leaving the EU and what do you think it will mean I'm personally on the completely completely 100% indifferent side I mean anything happens I'll take I'm not thinking one of them is going to be real positive not thinking one's going to be real negative obviously now it doesn't really matter but the fact is we're leaving I don't mind it. I don't love it, don't hate it, don't mind it. Nothing against it, nothing for it, just it's gonna happen. Switzerland are independent, so we can manage. So yeah, I think we'll do pretty well. 
Right, so today's movie review is going to be of the current highest grossing movie of the year so far. Probably won't remain that for more than a month because of Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah, uh, it's, it's Beauty and the Beast. Right, so it's a live action remake. More or less, it has everything the animated one had in it. And if you know the story, the animated one, there's really not much in saying it. But just in case you know, it is the story of a prince who has changed into a beast because of he had no love in his heart, but then... Um, a girl named Belle um, for a series of events and kidnappings and things goes to his girl and they starting to fall in love, just starting to fall in love, not that much, but then they actually end up falling in love and then everyone hates Belle and the Beast because they are uh, beastist, which is racist and sexist and everything, they're beastist and they want both of them dead. Uh, yeah, so the animation probably would trump the live action, but that's not to say the live action isn't still good. It's not by any means got anything too wrong with it. It's just the fact that, to be honest, the animation was... I mean, I can't remember much of it, but I remember watching it a few times when I was much younger. Um... And there's no reason to really remake it a live action, in my opinion. But, to be honest, there's no real, real reason to make any movie. So, what do they got in it that's good? Right, I'm guaranteeing you'll hear, be hearing a lot of people, well, you've already heard a lot of people complaining at, about Emma Watson, but I don't get it. I honestly do not get it, because the singing voice is alright, she acts well, she looks the part, she sounds the part, she... Yeah, there's nothing wrong. Actually, you know what? I will just say this for literally every single character. They look the part, they sound the part, they can sing the part, and they can walk the part. Every single character. Like, there is no character who really had my eyes rolling. But there was one character who I was actually really impressed with. I'm just... Yeah. One character who I was actually really impressed with. And that was Ewan McGregor as Lumiere the Candlestick. Why is that? I could not tell it's Ewan McGregor at all. Like, it just shows he is a really good actor when he can have that happen. I mean, I could immediately tell it was Emma Watson. I mean, I know it is was Emma Watson uh, before, but she has put in no effort in there to really make herself different than Hermione Granger. But, um, Ewan McGregor, hands down, as Lumiere, the best vo voice performance in the film. Um, and, well, he was in Moulin Rouge, so he's definitely got a good singing voice, but, um, yeah, also a good singing voice. But everything else, it, it's pretty much what you'd expect. There's nothing that you wouldn't expect in it, which I suppose is a good thing, because it means that not many people's childhoods will be ruined, but it is also a bad thing, because, again, why did they need to make this? I suppose I have got two major complaints about the movie and both of them I'm 90% sure were not in the original because um, I can't remember everything about the original I haven't watched it in like about maybe 15 years uh, but yeah there were two scenes well one character and one scene that felt just not in the right place there was one scene which involved um, them. It's a really long story, but there's a scene in around the middle of the film that doesn't really have a lot to do with anything else. That scene felt like a drag to pace out, not a musical number, didn't feel that needed. And there was a Deus Ex Machina character who I'm not sure if they were in the original, but. I don't think they were, because it's just a Deus Ex Machina character who don't remember their name, don't remember what they looked like, don't remember any lines they said, if they said any. They were just pointless. Um, but overall, there's nothing in it that is offensive in, in any shape or form. It is Beauty and the Beast. It's what you get when you expect to see a live action Beauty and the Beast. It looks pretty, it sounds alright, the thing is not too bad. But again... It's exactly what you'd expect. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, good time now, gosh, what's required, really? Um, uh, it's one of those movies where there's nothing stand now apart from Gregor's performance. 
Um, I'm legit trying to think of any really big complaints or really big standouts. There's not much. It's just an okay movie made by the book. And yeah, I mean, it, even if it didn't have those two things that I really had a problem with, it would still be okay. I mean, there's not really a lot of ways they can make it into a really good film. Um, so, yeah, good time, Nara Cross Watch Required. Yeah, it's alright. But anyway, thanks for watching the vlog, and I'll see you on Saturday.